Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hello, good morning. It's Friday, May 27th. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to get to the latest in Uvalde, but first we start with an update to a SWAT situation on the city's south side that we first told you about on GMSA. That's right, Sarah. This is a whole list of charges. Or rather, there is a whole list of charges awaiting a man who allegedly fired at San Antonio police inside a south side home. For now, that man is in a hospital getting treatment after police fired back and shot him in the leg. The exchange led to a standoff that lasted for several hours. It was on a street called Topsy. That's not far from Pleasanton Road. Katrina Weber is in the neighborhood where it happened and tells us the suspect took police by surprise. In a briefing, Police Chief William McManus offered some pretty jaw-dropping details. He says that this suspect broke into a home here, hid under a blanket, and then jumped out to shoot at the officers. Now, those officers were able to escape injury, but that suspect wasn't as lucky. Now, police didn't know what might happen next, so they blocked off this neighborhood for the next three hours or so. They initially came out here around 3 in the morning on a call about shots fired in the 8800 block of Topsy. People in a home here thought the shots were coming from outside, from a man who lived in a shed behind their home. Police say it turns out he was firing from inside that home that he had broken in. They found out by surprise. was hiding under covers in the bedroom and when the officers cleared the threshold of, threshold of the doorway, he started shooting. Officers fired back and hit the suspect in his leg, then backed out of the home and called in a SWAT team. McManus says as SWAT officers were getting into position, the suspect came out and surrendered. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to survive. No one else was hurt. Police say there were three other people in the home at the time. They all got out safely, and police do not believe that they had any involvement in this. In fact, he says that they didn't even know that the suspect had broken into their home. Reporting from the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Of course, we are continuing following the latest developments in Uvalde and still have crews standing by there. We are expecting to get an update from DPS around 11 a.m. And then we will air that press conference live right here when it begins. Also later today, Governor Greg Abbott is scheduled to speak in Uvalde. But ongoing efforts to support the community there, that's supposed to happen around 3.30 this afternoon. And then, of course, we already know that President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden are expected to be in Uvalde coming up this Sunday. Well, people in Uvalde and surrounding communities are stepping up to help those in need. Several towns are hosting a barbecue fundraiser, including one group in Uvalde. That's where we find our R.J. Marquez live this morning. R.J. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Sarah. So just to kind of give you a little bit of background here, on our way to Uvalde last night, photojournalist Sal Salazar spotted a bunch of pits, a bunch of trucks out here, and he said, you know what, they must be hosting some sort of benefit, and that's exactly what's going out here in Uvalde. We have got a brisket barbecue benefit going on here, and we got over 100 briskets ready to go. All of this stuff is going to be available for people to come out here at noon. You can see these things look delicious. They smell great, and a Kendall White, he's one of the organizers of this event. Kendall's going to kind of unwrap one of these uh, briskets for us here in just a bit. And look at that right there. That is uh, very, very impressive there. Of course, they have been out here throughout the night getting ready here for this big barbecue fundraiser, brisket fundraiser. And they got the pits and smokers ready last night, prepared dozens of briskets. I think we've been told that there was about 180 briskets out here for people to just kind of stop by and come and pick up. And we're told for this idea for this fundraiser started right here in Uvalde. But get this, it has grown to at least 10 cities in the area, and that includes La Prior, Crystal City, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio, and many more. They're looking to raise $30,000 for these families, the victims' families, but say that, you know what, even if you stop by, no donation is necessarily needed. Just come and stop by, have a good time, and meet with one another and come for one another come with what you what you're willing to give I mean there's no money required just whatever we can do to help the city is what we're doing I mean okay. it's the littlest we could do you know most of it's emotional but if we could relieve them financially for a little bit that's that's right. that's our goal there's no amount of money that can return these kids or these family members back but we're trying to do what we can to help them get some comfort in this time of tragedy 
All right, so they're basically calling this a pop-up barbecue fundraiser, and it officially gets started at noon. Cheryl White, you just heard from right there. She also told me they will host a raffle and an online auction in the next few days, raffling off some items that have been donated to help raise money for the victims here in Uvalde, and that is the Uvalde Strong raffle page. So out here live again this morning, this uh, big fundraiser here done by several communities, including Uvalde, starts at noon. So go ahead and stop by here. We're off of Highway 90 right here in Uvalde. And as we just saw, a lot of these briskets ready to go, ready to be eaten, ready to get some donations out here. And again, it's been a very, very difficult week for people here just trying to stay strong for one another and comfort one another. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you so much. Well, if you're wondering what you can do to help Uvalde community, we have a story right now on KSAT.com that gives you some of that information. We have links to different organizations where you can make a monetary donation. And then, of course, you can always donate blood, which is also still in high demand. Let's take a look at today's Nine at Nine. Several gun control groups will be protesting outside the NRA convention in Houston, which begins today. Overnight, Governor Greg Abbott announced he will no longer appear in person at the convention and instead send a recorded video message to play. Former President Donald Trump and other leading Republicans are still expected to attend the convention. A bipartisan group of senators trying to find a compromise on gun legislation. Democrats' first attempt failed yesterday in the Senate. Republicans blocked debate on a domestic terrorism bill that would have opened debate on hate crimes and gun policy. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he will give negotiations about two weeks while Congress is in recess. The Biden administration preparing to send long-range rocket systems to Ukraine to support its fight against Russia. The multiple launch rocket system is capable of firing rockets hundreds of kilometers, which could be a game changer in the war. Russia's war in Ukraine is worsening a global food crisis. In the U.S., high prices are straining food banks and increasing the risk of recession. In some poorer nations, the crisis is causing scarcity and hunger. Russia and Ukraine are usually some of the world's biggest exporters of grain. About 500,000 additional cans of specialty baby formula are heading to the U.S. It will be for children who have multiple food allergies or are allergic to milk. Once in the U.S., the formula will be distributed through direct orders, healthcare facilities, hospitals, and pharmacies. Actor Ray Liotta has died at the age of 67. According to his publicist, he passed away in his sleep. The Field of Dreams and Goodfellas actor had been in Dominican Republic working on a project when he died. His cause of death remains unclear. More than 50 million Americans are expected to hit the roads and skies this weekend, with nearly everyone paying more for fuel and airfare. At the pump, the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded this morning is 460, an all-time high. If you're flying instead of driving, expect big crowds and long lines. Wall Street could end on a high note this week following broad market gains yesterday. Stocks closed higher following strong earnings reports from retailers like Macy's, Dollar Tree and Dollar General. The S&P 500 up 2 percent, the Dow Jones rising 1.6 percent, the Nasdaq gaining 2.7 percent. Fewer people applied for unemployment benefits last week. Applications now near historic lows, signaling a tight U.S. labor market. Initial jobless claims falling to 210,000 from the previous week's 218,000. Continuing claims remain near the lowest level in 52 years. And that is today's Nine at Nine. Let's go outside with live cam right now. Katie Blake in for Justin. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Mark and Sarah. It is warm out there this morning, humid too. Now, before the sun came up, skies were clear, but we had that little deck of clouds move in right around sunrise. We'll get rid of those clouds pretty quickly here over the next few hours. Abundant sun this afternoon, so it's going to be another hot day. And in fact, the entire upcoming weekend will be hot and I've got your Memorial Day forecast coming up in just a few minutes in the full forecast. But in case you missed it, if you haven't seen it on the KSAT Weather Authority app or on social media yet, here's today's pollen count. Molds are still holding on. They've been moderate the past couple of days. Still in the moderate category today with a count of 640. Pine is low with a count of 50. Grass and pigweed are both low with a count of 10. So out there now we do have clouds, mid 70s, light southerly winds. But as I mentioned by this afternoon, a ton of sunshine 
sunshine. Look for a high temperature in the upper 90s, so another hot day with south winds. Light, we will pick up more of a breeze over the course of the holiday weekend. We'll talk more in detail about what you can expect over the next few days. Coming up in just a little bit. Guys, back to you. Katie, thank you. 907, about 75 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Students across the country are standing in solidarity with the residents of Uvalde. Coming up, what some students in a Minnesota high school did to protest for gun control. Plus, Bears care for Uvalde. Coming up, how a local school is teaming up with a business to collect plush animals for children in Uvalde. 9-11 right now, Texans coming together following the tragic school shooting and supporting the Uvalde community in unique ways. So here at home, Briscoe Elementary School is collecting plush animals for Robb Elementary School students. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Briscoe Elementary. Good morning. Good morning, Tiffany. How many plush animals are they hoping to collect? Good morning, Mark and Sarah. They're hoping to collect a lot. One plush animal for every student at Robb Elementary School and joining us right now we have the head of school to talk a little bit more about how this all started. Good morning Jennifer, can you talk to us about what the goal of this is and how this started? So the goal was um, to provide some comfort to the families in Uvalde. Um, we heard that our, um, our community partner Gold Coffee was um, heading up this drive to get a, a plushie in the hands of all 600 students in Uvalde. Um, and we just did a call of action to our kids and um, it's happening. And, and we hope that this is gonna make just a small impact. How is your staff and how are the students doing and what do they think about this? So the staff and students, they love giving. So that is the wonderful thing, it shows us you know, it gives us purpose and being an international baccalaureate school, it's part of who we are and who we want to be. Um, this has directly affected our Briscoe family because our teachers, two of our teachers uh, specifically, have family members that attend Robb Elementary. And so um, the day after was difficult for all of us, um, lots of hugs a few tears, um, but the overall theme was that we're here, we're safe, we're gonna do anything and everything um, to support our kids. And um, as the week's gone on, um, you know, we're, we're moving on and kids are happy and um, I think parents feel reassured that it's gonna be okay. And you can feel it in the energy, the students here in the hallway, they're smiling and it's it's a different vibe, of course, but they are, we are seeing smiles again, right? Yes, yeah, smiles, laughter, um, kids running up the walk, <laughs> hugs, um, you, you have the end of the year excitement yeah. and so I'm very, very blessed. Awesome. And then... We have someone special here this morning, fourth grader Mar Michael Garcia. And good morning, Michael. You wrote something very special that you wanted to share with all of us. Can you read it for us? Yes. I know Briscoe Bears can't reverse time, but Briscoe will help in a different way. We will send those stuffed animals to those students in Uvalde, not just for safety and comfort, but for love. That's so special. What does this mean to you to have this at your school? If this means to me that I knowing we can help uh, some kids and students in Uvalde who have experienced a sad tragedy. If I was in their situation, I'd feel the same way. You're so special, and thank you so much for sharing that this morning. I know a lot of kids are going to be very happy when they get this. Thank you so much, Michael. And, of course, you can donate. There's still time to donate yes. this morning. Yes, there's still time to donate. You can drop um, stuffed animals off at Briscoe Elementary, or you can drop it off at Gold Coffee. And the more, the merrier. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. We'll have all those details on KSAT.com. Back to you. Tiffany, give him a hug for us, please. What a well-spoken young yes. man. Michael, this is a hug from everyone at KSAD and everyone in our community because you did such a great job this morning. And you know what? He wrote this just this morning. So wow. you're so talented. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, what a week. 9.15 right now, and Katie Blake is back, and she's talking about some low temperatures. And Katie, I know you weren't here yesterday morning, but mm -hmm. I know you're aware that it was <laughs> unbelievably it, chilly for late it May. It was like fleece weather. Yes, it was great. It, if not for just an hour or so. Mm -hmm. It was really cool yesterday morning. Uh, not quite as cool this morning, especially since we had those clouds sneak in from the south. But look at the hill country. 10 degrees cooler than San Antonio in places like Curve in Fredericksburg, where the lows today were closer to 60 degrees here at the airport, closer to 70. The low was also 70 in Pleasanton. Here's a look at 410 near the airport, and things are overcast out there for now. We did have some clouds build in from the south, and even a little bit of cloud cover now across parts of the hill country. So we've got a deck of clouds out there currently, but over the next few hours, as the sun gets higher and higher in the sky, those clouds are going to go away. I think even by lunchtime, we're talking about a lot of sunshine this afternoon afternoon, more blue sky, and that means it's going to be another hot day. Expect high temperatures close to 100 for a lot of us. Holotus area 96, 99 divine. Poteet Pleasanton, I am expecting you to touch the century mark this afternoon. Uh, 96 around Bulverde, 95 Kerrville and Comfort as we wrap up the week today. A note about today, especially as we get into the afternoon, air quality today has taken another hit. This is the same thing we had in place yesterday. Air quality considered unhealthy for sensitive groups because of increased levels of ground level ozone. Again, those sensitive groups are the very, very young, the elderly, and also those with respiratory conditions like asthma or COPD. If you've got someone in your household that falls into one of those groups, they're just encouraged to limit their time outside this afternoon during the hottest part of the day. Most of us not affected. As we look ahead to the weekend, uh, it is going to be a hot one. That's for sure. Not a big surprise when we're talking about Memorial Day it is that time of year, but high temperatures will be back near 100 degrees Saturday, Sunday with a few more clouds on Memorial day itself will bring the high down a few degrees, but still going to be plenty toasty across Texas this morning. We've got some clouds in our part of the state, otherwise clear and quiet across the Lone Star State. Surface high pressure is centered just off to our north. There's a low pressure system well to the northeast. That's the same storm system that brought us the rain late Tuesday night early, early Wednesday. It is moving away and we've got surface high pressure that's moved in behind it. Basically, that just keeps weather quiet across Texas today. Now tomorrow that surface high takes a trip off to the east and winds rotating clockwise around that area of surface high pressure will start to bring a pretty stout south wind into place tomorrow, but especially by Sunday and Monday. So the wind will be more noticeable as we get into Sunday, Monday this week, and that's when we'll start to see some wind gusts up closer to 25 even 30 miles per hour at times. It'll also be a little windy uh, as we get into Tuesday next week. So thankfully we'll have Mother Nature's AC in place Sunday and Monday because it's going to be hot no matter where you're going across Texas. If you are heading out of town, you're going to have a hard time getting away from the heat. We're looking at triple digits Del Rio, Laredo, up to San Angelo and even Lubbock over the course of the weekend near the Metroplex 97 tomorrow, 96 Sunday, 94 on Monday, also hot and very humid in the Houston area all the way through the long weekend. No rain expected across Texas, so you really won't have to worry about uh, a lot of precipitation or severe weather issues over the course of the weekend if you will be hitting the road. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast for today. Again, we've got some clouds this morning. They'll really start to break up here late morning as we get closer to lunchtime. Plenty of sun by mid to late afternoon. Look for a high around 98 light southerly winds today, just about five to 10 miles per hour. A little bit more of a breeze kicks in on Saturday and then windy at times Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So again, even though it'll be hot this weekend, Mother Nature's AC will help us out just a little bit, guys. Eh. Uh, Mother Nature's AC. <laughs> it's uh, the best I can do. Thank, Understood. Thank, thank you, Katie. A for effort, Katie Blake. <laughs> a for effort. 920 right now, 75 degrees on your Friday. Coming up next, a shooting in Uvalde, reopening wounds of those involved in the Newtown school shooting a few years ago. David Sears will have more on this story and others in your morning headlines when we come back. 923 in your morning headlines. Emotion still pouring out, not just here in Texas, but from folks across the country and high school students once again getting their voices out there.
and the NRA convention has started in Houston, although the mayor of Houston is urging people to not come to the convention. David Sears is here with the morning headlines. Good morning, David. Yeah, for some specific reasons, he's telling people to stay away from Houston. We'll get to that in just a second, but thank you guys. And let's start with this. Hearts heavy all across the country as people find some way to honor those who lost their lives in Uvalde. One community reliving tragedy, Newtown, where another school shooting took place at Sandy Hook Elementary back in December of 2012. Members of that community held a vigil for those in Uvalde last night, and as you would expect for some, those wounds were reopened, especially those who were actually at that school when the shooting happened or those who had loved ones who were killed. I survived the Sandy Hook shooting when I was only nine years old. My daughter went to preschool with many of those children that we lost. My nephew is Daniel Barden. He would be in high school today if the circumstances were different, but they're not. And so we're all doing whatever we can think of. Some of the folks who were at that vigil also calling for a change to gun laws. In Minnesota, there was a walkout conducted by students at the local high school. Their way of bringing attention to the impact school shootings are having on students across the country. They started the gathering with a moment of silence for the 21 victims of the shooting in Uvalde. Then several students climbed on a rock to address their concerns and encourage those other students and those across the nation to get people to speak up. There's so many adults out there that tell us that our voices can't be heard, but that's not true. Our voices can be heard. If you see someone struggling, please help them out. Because I know a majority of these people that lash out, they get kicked down and down and down. They look out to something radical. Gun violence shouldn't be part of the world, I guess. Yeah, the students are going to be let out for the summer break in a couple of weeks. And that was the other message they were sending is they want all their students to be able to get home safe and enjoy the summer. We mentioned the NRA convention started today. Several of the entertainers set to perform have dropped out like Don McLean and Larry Gatlin and the mayor of Houston, Sylvester Turner, actually telling people not to come to his city, considering what happened Tuesday in Uvalde. The mayor is saying that you should not come. It would be respectful for families who are planning funerals for their children for them to not come. And once again, Governor Greg Abbott will not be attending in person, but will send a video message. And former President Donald Trump is the headline speaker for that convention. There's some other pretty uh, well-known Republicans also going to be there at that convention as well. Sir, so. Okay, and I believe we're going to hear from the governor again this afternoon. Yes. Next press conference is scheduled for? 11 this morning, a yes, DPS sir. press conference from and, Uvalde. All right, governor is at 3.30. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it. Right now we are at 926, 75 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A look at our overnight news, including a house fire on the west side that sent two people and an infant to the hospital. And an update to a car burglary case. Authorities making an arrest late last night. Details on how they caught the suspects when we come back. Welcome back. There is other news today. Top stories we're following. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that it has arrested two people following a chase overnight. It's an update to a story we first brought to you yesterday on our five o'clock newscast. The incident happened in the area of West Military Drive and Mary Oaks around nine last night. Deputies say they were looking for the suspects who were armed with an AK-47. Dep deputies then ran across a stolen vehicle with four juvenile suspects related to a car burglary that happened earlier in the uh, day. In the end, deputies said they arrested two individuals, but were still searching for two others who were possibly armed. Well, two women and a one month old baby are in the hospital after house fire on the city's west side early this morning. They are be being treated for possible smoke inhalation. Call came in around 430 this morning on West Laurel, not far from North Zarzamora and Woodlawn Lake. Firefighters said when they arrived, they found flames showing from the house. The fire started in the back and eventually grew. Four people were inside the home at the time of the fire and they all woke up to smoke. They managed to get out and call for help. A fourth person was not hurt. The cause of the fire is still listed as unknown. San Antonio police say a man is in serious condition after he was stabbed several times overnight. This happened just before one this morning on Walsham near Mid Crown on the northeast side. Here's what we know. Police say the stabbing happened at a homeless camp behind a Walmart. During the stabbing, the man also lost the tip of a finger. So far, a suspect description has not been released.
And a woman and her small child are recovering following a rollover crash on San Antonio's southeast side overnight. It happened around 1130 last night near the area of I-37 and East South Cross. SAPD says the woman was ejected from the vehicle during the crash. She and her four-year-old child were taken to a hospital, thankfully in stable condition. So far, there's no word on what caused that crash to happen. Well, support continues to pour in to help ease the burden on the families whose loved ones were killed this week in Uvalde. A flower shop in Lacoste is coordinating with flower farms and wholesalers in the area and around the world to provide free flowers for all the upcoming funerals. As Alicia Barretta reports, this flower shop has already begun to receive shipments of flowers, but say they still need help to get the job done. Veronica Berger thinks about the little faces that frequently walk into her flower shop in Lacoste. I know the 10 year olds that come in here, the ones that come and pick flowers for their parents for Mother's Day, the ones that we made bouquets for for kinder graduation, the ones we made flowers for to go to the ho hospital when they were born. Which is why she's helping with free flowers, volunteers and planning with designers and delivery trucks to help the two local flower shops in Uvalde as they prepare to lay the 21 victims to rest in the coming days. Everybody in Uvalde, our hearts go out to them and everybody needs beautiful casket spray. Whatever colors that they pick, whatever they want, if they want special things on there like their baseball gloves or anything that made them who they are, uh, we're gonna get those casket sprays absolutely done for them. And they're getting support from all over the world. Wholesalers are sending flowers from Mexico, Ecuador, Holland, and it's expected that by Monday, this room will be full. Still, monetary donations are needed. We have to pay for the gas, we have to get the supplies to make the easels, to make the casket sprays and everything else that you can only get from wholesale places. Details on how to donate to ours flower shop can be found on ksat.com. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, this morning we're taking a look at the policies and procedures that local law enforcement followed during an active shooter. We learned the training changed following the Columbine shooting in 1999. Training across the board is stop the threat, stop the killing, stop the dying. We spoke with a security engineer consultant and former active shooter trainer who says all law enforcement are trained to follow a similar protocol. The job is to stop the shooters. Or, or shooter as a solo officer or as a team. There's no waiting if the shots are being fired. The Bear County Sheriff and San Antonio Police Department policy reflects this training. Officers are trained to wear their body armor and have their weapons ready, but they're also trained to switch gears if the situation calls for it. As soon as they make entry, if, if suspect makes entry into the room and stops shooting, at that point right there, it's barricaded suspect. It changes to that and you call SWAT, you create your plan, you communicate and all that. So, but again, it switches back immediately after the first shot is fired. Ryan Searles says the training is in conjunction with the proactive security upgrades to buildings to ensure armed suspects don't make entry. Well, lawmakers in Washington appear to be coming together in the wake of this week's tragedy here in South Texas. ABC's Ike Jachi has the latest on the gun debate. Americans are making their voices heard in the debate over gun safety. From student walkouts to Major League Baseball, the Rays and Yankees using their social media accounts to tweet gun violence statistics last night instead of game updates. And now, possible movement in Washington. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is urging colleagues to find common ground, directing Texas Senator John Cornyn to work with Democrats. I'm not interested in the same old tired talking points. I'm actually interested in what we can do to make the terrible events that occurred in Uvalde less likely in the future. On the table, background checks for gun stores, gun shows, and online sales, and red flag measures that could allow courts to temporarily remove guns from people deemed dangerous. Polls show more than 80% of Americans support those policies, but any talk of reform involving guns is a non-starter for many Republicans, including Texas Senator Ted Cruz, telling Sky News now isn't the time to talk about gun reform. Is this the moment to reform gun laws? You know, it's, it's easy to go to politics. But it's important. It's at the heart of the issue. The proposals from Democrats and the media, inevitably, when some violent psychopath murders people. A violent psychopath who's able to get a weapon so easily. 18-year-old with two AR-15. 
We learned overnight Texas Governor Greg Abbott will no longer appear in person at today's NRA convention in Houston. A recorded video of Abbott will play at the convention instead. Abbott says he'll return to Uvalde to meet with families. Now, several gun control groups will be protesting outside the NRA convention today, and several local leaders are calling for peaceful protests. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 75 degrees, Katie Blake, and you know, it kind of looks yucky out there. You can almost see the humidity just kind of <laughs> sticking to everything. Yeah, a little, little, little yucky, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, humidity will drop this afternoon, so we'll have more of a dry heat. You'll probably hear us say that a lot, uh, but it's still going to be hot. Uh, we do have the clouds out there this morning, not for everyone, but they uh, moved in around the metro area around San Antonio and Bear County. We'll start to see them break up here in the next couple hours and by this afternoon, a ton of sunshine once again. So another hot day on tap 87 by lunchtime as the sun starts to come out and then a high temperature around 98 this afternoon, south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, so not much of a breeze today. All right, if you're hitting the road for the holiday weekend, here's what you can expect if you're heading up I-35 to Dallas. A ton of sunshine all across Texas today. It'll be hot in Dallas as well, 96, 92 in Houston with a few more clouds. If you're heading south on I-35 to Laredo, 102, their expected high temperature today with, yep, plenty of sunshine. Another look at your travel forecast across the entire state will be along here in just a few minutes, guys. Well, thank you, Katie. A disclaimer, in case you are eating breakfast right now, inspectors found dead roaches and rat droppings at a local cafe, but that wasn't all. Tim Gerber stopped by to see what else was behind the kitchen door. Our first stop this week takes us to the west side, where inspectors found multiple violations at the Old Highway 90 Cafe located in the 600 block of Old Highway 90. When inspectors stopped by April 7th, they found multiple dead roaches throughout the facility and rat droppings in the water heater closet. The cold hold unit wasn't keeping items cold enough. It should be a minimum of 41 degrees, but egg yolks showed a temperature of 54 degrees. Employees were seen touching raw meat and then using a utensil to serve ready to eat food without washing their hands. Another employee observed touching ready to eat tortillas after touching a dirty rag. Cafe also written up for a repeat violation for multiple holes in the wall throughout the facility. They were ordered to make repairs with approved materials. The inspector noting cardboard may not be used. I stopped by this week to see if the repairs had been made. Have you guys repaired the holes in the walls? Oh yeah, I pay all, I fix all, everything. Employee Carlos Chacon showed me the work was ongoing. I need a painting, uh, enough you need right now, but still I working on it. it. Yeah. yeah. Inspectors gave the cafe a barely passing score of 72. They have until July 6th to finish the repairs. Fajita Taco Place number three in the 1800 block of Thompson Place came in with a score of 80. On April 15th, the inspector found eggs on the prep line were 72 degrees. That's well over the recommended temperature of 45. Charo beans from the previous day were thrown out because they were no longer safe to eat. Unidentified pest droppings were also found in the kitchen prep area. The corrections need to be made by July 14th. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. On the flip side, several restaurants got perfect scores to see which ones did well. Hold up your camera to this QR code. It'll take you through directly to our perfect scores database on KSAT.com. 940, about 75 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We come back. What you need to know if you're traveling this Memorial weekend. Taking a look at current average gas prices as many get to, ready to hit the road for the Memorial Day weekend. The average price here in San Antonio, about 422 a gallon. The state average, 425. And look at the national average right now, highest it's ever been, $4.60 a gallon for regular unleaded. Ooh, really feeling that. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can expect some headaches on the road and in the air this weekend. A nation stuck at home during the pandemic is now eager to travel. ABC's Motokasar Abdi has the latest.
We've been cooped up and I've just been working a lot. So yeah, it feels good to get out. More than 50 million Americans are expected to hit the roads and skies this weekend, with nearly everyone paying more for fuel and airfare. It's insane. I've never seen prices this high before. At the pump, the national average for a gallon of gas this morning is $4.60, an all-time high. It's more than $6 in California. Some tips to save? Slow down. Aggressive driving can lower gas mileage by 30%. And reconsider those rooftop cargo carriers, which can reduce mileage by 25%. A shortage of rental cars is another speed bump for travelers this year. Some are turning to peer-to-peer -peer rental services like Turo and Getaround, but they come with risks. When you're renting from a private person, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so you do have a risk of getting to your car and it not meeting your standards of cleanliness. If you're flying instead of driving, expect big crowds and long lines. The TSA expects to screen 2.1 million passengers a day at airports across the country at or even a little more than pre-pandemic levels. Delta alone is seeing 25% more travelers now than last year. This despite domestic ticket prices, which are nearly 30% higher than before the pandemic. Prices now averaging $394 round trip. You know, I'm just excited about traveling, going somewhere else. And now an extra challenge, airlines cutting more flights because of a pilot shortage. Just yesterday, Delta announced that beginning in July, it's cutting about 100 flights per day to give the airline more wiggle room should there be any issues with staffing or weather. And back on the roads, expect more traffic. AAA predicts an 8% increase in drivers this weekend compared to last year. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 946, the long holiday weekend is here. Some people getting a jump start, maybe headed to the coast. Yeah, I, I went to my hometown this week because I don't have an actual weekend off. But Katie, when I went, it was kind of rainy. Is, yeah, this weekend should be beautiful. Uh, yes, uh, no rain in sight down on the coast this weekend. And really the heat and the humidity will be the big story there. Probably not a big surprise, right? Here's a look at the forecast. If you are heading down to the water this weekend, uh, you'll be dealing with some choppy bays. Uh, all three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, high temperatures, mid 80s there, but keep in mind the humidity higher down uh, closer to the coast. So that uh, generally keeps the temperatures uh, a little lower, but uh, heat index, uh, well, those numbers will likely be uh, pretty big time over the course of the weekend. So make sure you're staying hydrated. Water temperatures down on the Texas Gulf Coast, uh, roughly in the low 80s. Uh, here's a look at the rest of the state. If you will be hitting the road this afternoon, it's really just going to be hot all across the state. You'll need the uh, sunshade or, or your sunglasses. That's for sure. Uh, high temperatures uh, across a lot of the state will be in the 90s, even some triple digits tomorrow morning. Some more clouds across the southern tier of the state. So some morning clouds to start and then a lot of sun as you head into the afternoon afternoon hours on Saturday uh, across the country. The big weather story today is actually going to be along the East Coast. That's where we've got a front a cold front producing a line of severe thunderstorms. There's actually a tornado watch out from roughly the DC area all the way down south through Virginia and even into a good chunk of North Carolina there, including Raleigh. So some severe weather will be possible. Scattered severe storms possible along parts of the eastern seaboard today. Also some storms possible across the northern plains from uh, Montana into the Dakotas. Otherwise, quiet across the U.S. on this Friday. Here at home, we've got some clouds this morning. They snuck in right around sunrise, um, uh, but we don't have clouds across the entire uh, a viewing area really from Gonzales uh, up to New Braunfels around the San Antonio area, even into parts of Medina County. There are also some scattered clouds across the hill country and some cloud cover over in Maverick County near Eagle Pass. Again, the cloud cover goes away quickly here over the next few hours, and then we get a ton of sun this afternoon. Temperatures right now generally in the 70s, but we do have some spots already in the low 80s. 81 Catula, 81 in Beeville up in the hill country. It's 75 in Kerrville, also 75 in Rock Springs. Humidity is high this morning. Dew point numbers are in the 70s, so it is a it is feeling oppressively muggy out there. Like Sarah said, when you look outside, you can kind of just feel the humidity in the air as we get into this afternoon. So sun comes out, our temperatures start to climb. Our dew point numbers will actually drop this afternoon, so it won't be as muggy this afternoon as it is this morning. So more of a dry heat kicks in, but overnight and into Saturday morning, that humidity comes right back up. We'll kind of 
play that cycle over the course of the weekend. Very muggy mornings and then more of a dry heat in the afternoon. So 87 at lunchtime as we start to lose those morning clouds. Look for a high in San Antonio around 98 this afternoon. Heat index again won't be too crazy because our air will dry out a little bit during the hottest part of the day. Even at 8 o'clock, still in the low 90s. After the sun goes down, temperatures will slowly start to fall through the 80s. So if you've got plans this evening, just know it is still going to be pretty toasty out there. South winds today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. We talked about this last half hour, but uh, the wind will be in play a little bit more over the course of the weekend. Breezy Saturday, but then windy at times, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, with some gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. Our high temperatures, they stay in the mid to upper 90s all the way through the next week. And unfortunately, no good shot of rain in the next seven days either. Mark, Sarah. Thank you very much, Katie Blake. Right now, 950, about 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm RJ Marquez reporting in Uvalde where a group here has put together a large barbecue and biscuit brisket fundraiser to help the victims of that horrible tragedy from earlier this week. This group has been out here barbecuing throughout the night. They got the pits and smokers ready last night and prepared dozens of briskets and other items for people to pick up. We're told this idea for this fundraiser started right here in Uvalde but has now grown to at least 10 cities in the area. That includes La Prior, Crystal City, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio, and many more. So they're looking to raise about $30,000 for those families, but say that no donation is actually needed. They just want people to come out here and have a good time and be able to comfort one another. So they're calling this a barbecue pop-up fundraiser and officially gets started at noon. The organizer of the event, Cheryl White, also tells me that there will be a raffle and an online auction later on to help raise money and th with those items that have been donated to help the people here in Uvalde. Reporting from Uvalde, RJ Marquez, KSA 12. RJ, thank you very much. I right, had a couple program notes, folks. Of course, we're going to take all these live. The first one is a big DPS press conference. The next one is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning. We will be covering that live. A lot of questions yesterday asking authorities to clarify the timeline for the law enforcement response. We're hoping to get some more answers today directly from DPS. Then Governor Greg Abbott is speaking at 3.30 this afternoon. Hope to hear much more from him. And then security will be very, very tight in Uvalde late this weekend. The president and first lady will be there to visit and meet with families coming up on Sunday. Look for more coverage as we can make it happen for you. And again, if you're wondering what you can do to help the Uvalde community, we have a story right now on KSAT.com that gives you some of that information. So we have different links to organizations where you can make a monetary donation. And then, of course, you can always donate blood. I was actually out at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center earlier this week, and they are booked for the next several days, but they're saying what you can do is make your appointment two weeks in advance because they say they always need that demand for blood. And let's keep that going. All right, traffic real quick. It's been a pro, uh, kind of an unusual morning. A lot of folks may already be heading out of town. We've got uh, moderate traffic at 281 and bidders and 90 at Zars or more, but a lot of folks are getting a jump start, start rather on the Memorial Day weekend. Katie Blake. Yeah, if you are hitting the road today, no issues with rain, no severe weather anywhere across the state of Texas. It's just going to be hot. You'll run into a few more clouds if you're heading east on 10 toward Houston. Here at home this weekend, it is going to be hot. Yes, the heat is not going anywhere. 98 Saturday, Sunday, 95 on Monday, thanks to just a few more clouds. And we'll have the wind to help us out this weekend, too. So even though it'll be hot, we'll, we'll keep that hot air moving around just a little bit more. Yes, ma'am. All right, folks, this weekend, be safe. Remember Uvalde and remember all our service members who either passed away in the line of service or have served our country and are no longer with us. Thanks for joining us this morning.